Hey, I'm Scotty, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you six tips to really improve your urban sketching. So if you wanna practice really loose, expressive line work with your urban sketching, I recommend finding a reference like this. It has so much interesting detail that we can sketch. So to make it easier for you to see what's going on, so I've whitened the background up so that the building pops forward so you can see it more easily. Um, and then I've also added these people at the bottom. It took a little bit of time to add that in Photoshop, but it was worth it, I think. Uh, so you can take a screenshot of this image right here, or if you're on my Patreon, I'll put my high res version up there. Okay, so tip number two, if you're not sure where to start an image like this, it's quite complex. I recommend getting in another sketchbook or a scrap bit of paper to do a few thumbnail sketches. So with the thumbnail, I'm just going to get some angles here. I'm looking at the angle of that roof on the top left and then the right hand side. I'm coming straight down and then it's got a very nice angle there. That could be a nice way of sketching it and the people would be about there. And it's got windows and all the windows and everything comes to the vanishing point. So what that means is that if I draw this line, this point, everything on that face is going to aim at that point. So same on this side, vanishes on this side, and that's the horizon if you join those two points. So then if I draw the balcony in later, I've got, I'm still aiming at that point. So have that in mind as you're sketching all the features that you're aiming towards these points on either side. So on my sketch, I think I'm gonna stretch out that front face and make that right hand side a bit smaller. So now I'm gonna show you how to apply that plan to the page without drawing straight lines as a guide. So with a lot of my sketching, with my people sketching or my portrait sketching, I love to add construction through dots. So for this one, I've got my high point here on the corner and I might move it over there and you can move things around a bit with dots because later they'll just disappear. So that's that angle there. I'll look at my thumbnail. It could come down a bit. Okay, so I've got my dots. I know where I'm generally aiming for as I'm sketching. And this really helps me because I have a point where I'm aiming for. And if I need a feature on the building that's about halfway, I can go halfway between the two dots. Um, if I need to draw that balcony in, I look at halfway between the dots and I know where to put the balcony. So where do I actually start the sketch? Do I start in the middle or the side? I recommend starting in a corner here and making your way around the main shapes. Okay, so I'm gonna start up here. Now I'm looking over to the dot where it is. So if you want really energetic lines, we're not drawing straight from one point to the next. We're gonna do lots of scribbly lines. Let your hand kind of guide you a little bit and you get better at this as you, as you practice. And you don't have to go super fast. So I might like to go so I made a bit of a wobbly line there. And then where do I go? I go down. I'm just following the roof line now. I have to get a bit further down because of the top of the page. Now this, this dot here, I see it's here, so I'm gonna move it about there. And having a tiny bit of an angle here could give a bit more personality to the building. So I could go around the whole silhouette, but that's not essential. And my main idea that I have in mind is to build shapes. So I'm looking at that silhouette. So I've got some, some of the crates there sticking out. So I'm gonna go along that railing because that is the main shape, but I could follow some of the clothing. So instead of drawing a straight line, I can follow some of the details, which helps me know where that railing is. railing would come out to about there. When I'm doing this random line work, it's kind of in one line segments. So I do one line in that whole way. Another tip is if you stop to look up at the reference, you can actually just do a few little random squiggles on the page while you're looking. And coming down. Now, I can imagine that my vanishing point is here. So that, that bottom of the balcony is going to come this way. So this isn't at all accurate or realistic. It's just full of energy. Um, we can come in and add more detail later. And that general shape there, I went across the top, down here, and then these points show the bottom of those window sills. But I love this kind of sketching because it sort of brings a new life to the reference or whatever you're drawing. So there, I didn't go straight across, I did a little 
crazy random line there. The more crazy lines you have, I think the better. Okay, there has, there's a lot of feeling in that. Okay, got down to that point. So with this side window, let's, let's make sure we give a little bit of distance. It gives the sketch a more dramatic feel. Seems like that window there is a bit further back. This window sill. And you could spend hours sketching this reference um, if you're trying to get it all perfect. But I think this is much nicer. So I hope you can see I'm building the shapes around these dots I divided this shape up you can do these windows here and if you're doing bars like this just subtly changing the direction so not everything is the same okay there was no there was no actual line there but I've just added in a few lines to ground the building in Okay, now I come over to these stands. I'm holding my pen quite far back, you can see. It helps with keeping those lines really loose. It's just bags of chips. I wanna leave enough room for the people I've got here. So I think I'll add that sign in, that's very important. Some balloons or bowls. So for tip number five, it's all about how to sketch people in urban sketching. So for me, it always depends on how big the sketch is. So this, this is an A5 sheet of paper and the people are very small. So I'm not going to sketch in all the details. I'm just concentrating on the main shapes. So those main shapes here are the head. So let's start with the head and we're just getting that shape in. Just like I'm sketching the same style as before. And then we, we draw that back the curve of her back here. Just getting those shapes, it's very loose. There's a hand there and a hand there. Now she's got a bag, so let's add in that shape. It's about the same size as that, as her orange top there. And then the legs come in, that angle there, get that shape, and then the foot, and then the other one. And then the hair, we can divide that little shape up and we can divide the shape up again with the mask and then just a very subtle line for the eyes. Little dots there. There we go. So I really like that. So you can see here, I didn't focus on proportions too much. I was just looking at the main shapes, comparing that like the top to the bottom. It was about halfway to here. Um, this is a very simple way of sketching people. So for the second figure, let's, I know it's about the same height and the silhouette goes back there. That's the head shape, goes something like that, about the same way along. So that's the top half with a few more details. Just making our way down to simplify it as we go. Now the dogs, so now what I would do is I would find this negative space here, aligning it with the head and just start to draw in the silhouette. Compare where that foot is to the other coming up. And the other dog, focus on the outline of the head. Okay, so I've got some cute little figures in there. Okay, and then the great thing about this sketch is that there's a doorway just behind them. So if I, later on, I'll show you with my wash, I'll make this quite dark, and then those figures will stand out even more because I'll leave them quite light. Okay, now I'm just gonna add in a go around, add in a few more details. And we have another window here. I've been looking forward to doing the rail. It's a sheet here hanging off the balustrade. We've got a nice window here. And then over here we have these bottles of water. And then the power lines. The power lines are great because they bring your eye in. So these, these can be quite quick lines. And they go across here. There's even a light hanging there, which is great. Great little detail. So there's lots of detail on that front face. And then I've got some nice white space on that face, which is great. So now we're gonna move on to using my watercolors to add a little wash. 
And my tip here is to keep your wash really light and watery so that all this nice line work shines. So I've got my watercolors on the right here and I've chosen a few of them and I've made a wash. Um, so I'm gonna use those. So I'll hold my sketchbook at a slight angle and I help the paint if it's pooling to run down the page. And I've got a very light orange. I'm not gonna be uh, trying to follow these shapes exactly. I'm trying to leave a little bit of white space in here and drag the color down the page. Then we can add little bits here and there. Just hinting at the orange as it goes through there. Just as loose as our line work. Okay, so now I'm adding the, the top. I've got this maroon. Make the window, the dark sections of the windows, the same color. So now I've got some of the details to go in. So I've got the jeans, I've got the blue here. The water bottles here are blue. You can see a few of the clothes here are blue. So I've got a yellow here, a few yellow signs here. Red here to make that stand out. So the first step with the wash is just to block in those really light colors. And now let's go in and add some shadow. So I'm mostly gonna add the shadow on this side, the left-hand side, because that's where this building is in shadow. And I can go and add some highlights on the top. So if I go over some of this um, and I lose some of that nice highlights, that's okay. But I'll try and leave those people nice and light to stand out. And any other shadow lines that are on this light side, this is where you can add some splatters with just tap your brush and why not some blue splatters? So the next layer I wanna do is a really dark shadows. So I've got an even darker purple, just to do under the ledge, under this uh, roof section. And there's a really dark section under the balcony and then this door following that line. And then I said before, we're gonna make this, layer this in a bit even darker around these people. Some of these windows on this side need to be a bit darker. It gives the depth to the building and anchor it in on the bottom. So a little bonus tip here, I've got my Posca pen, which is a, a fine tip white pen. So that will go over the top really easily. Um, we need some highlights, bring some of these details back in. So I've given it a good shake so it's very opaque. So we can just outline some of the shapes here. So we're going over some of the areas. Just outline the bottom of that slightly, adding some random lines, not following the other lines. I even like to go over those, those power lines and here on the person. So it made a whole lot of those details pop back out after I added the shadows on top. So as I said, I'll put that high res reference up on my Patreon page if you're interested in downloading that. And if you want to support this channel, please consider joining my Patreon. And if you wanted to learn how to sketch a shop front like this in three easy steps, I recommend you check out this video here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.